Hello again and welcome to our latest video here on the YouTubes. My name is Jay Tate. I am publisher of the website AuburnSports.com, which is a place you should be visiting as often as humanly possible. And today we're going to do a little video previewing the Auburn Tigers basketball team, which made it to the Final Four last year until falling to Virginia due to some dubious choices, we could say, by the officials late in that game. Uh, the team this year, they lost a lot. They lost four major players in Bryce Brown, Jared Harper, Chuma Okiki, and Malik Dunbar, but they are replacing them. They still have some guys uh, left over from that team, some important role players last year that are going to be stepping up into bigger roles this year, and a whole gaggle of young guys, uh, all of whom were recruited pretty highly, uh, certainly the best recruiting class or signing class Auburn's ever had, and they think some of those guys are going to be able to slide in that rotation and really help them as the season goes on. Let's take a look at the prospective starting lineup uh, as they open the season against Georgia Southern on Tuesday, November 5th. That's going to be an 8 o'clock tip central time on the SEC Network. Javon McCormick is back. Uh, lightly recruited junior college guy who came in to kind of play behind Jared Harper last year and is now going to be the man. Played great uh, the last, let's say, month, five weeks of the season last year. Uh, attacks the ball downhill in the half court. He's also just terror um, in transition and a good spot up three point shooter. Although now that he's going to be like the point guard, I don't know as though he's going to get a ton of chances like that, but he's a pretty good three point shooter when you give him a chance. Samir Dowdy is back, a uh, shooting guard. He played more of a wing role last year, but uh, obviously Bryce Brown did an awesome job at shooting guard, and Samir's going to be doing that. Uh, we'll take a closer look at what he does uh, later on in the show, but uh, a great spot-up shooter. And a guy who I think is going to be leaned on to kind of administrate the offense a little bit more when Javon goes out. They have kind of like their up-and-coming point guard, a guy named Ty Jones, Turbo Jones. But I think they like Samir better as the backup right now, and so I think he'll be the guy that can be like a combo guard uh, when they need to give Javon a break. Isaac Okoro, a true freshman, a uh, four- or five-star player. I mean, he's like the crown jewel of the class. Um, wearing that 2-3, man, uh, playing small forward. A guy they think is a, a very good defender and a very good scorer. I think his defense is ahead of his offense at this point. But uh, let's give him a chance to kind of settle in and see what he can do. Um, we won't draw too many conclusions about him until we get about 10 games in. Daniel Purifoy, who was a tremendous role player for them as uh, March got serious uh, in the SEC tournament, he had the game of his life against North Carolina. Uh, in the NCAA tournament. And so he was really turning it on uh, late in the year. And they're thinking he can kind of parlay that into a starting role this year and just play in that same level. If he does, this team is going to be absolute terror. And then Austin Wiley, who's been here a lot longer than we thought he would, <laughs> is back as the center. Old, reliable number 50. Sometimes looks out of place because he's so damn tall and he kind of lumbers a little bit, but uh, they're going to find a way to help him this year uh, to get him in more ch more situations where he can help. And believe it or not, he's actually a very, very effective scoring option. It's just that he's not on the floor enough. We'll talk about uh, that a little bit more here in a minute. Let's take a look at what I call the Auburn roster grid or the depth chart, so to speak, and you can see uh, they're ankle deep in players these days. You can see the starting lineup there on the left, those are five up and down on the left side. Then your second team guy, Samir, as I mentioned earlier, I think Samir will be more of a combo guard uh, this year, and he'll relieve Javon a little bit for reasons that we'll explain later. But he's a good distributor of the ball. Uh, he can be very good as a shooting guard, and I also think he's going to be good as a point guard too. Uh, the year that he transferred from VCU to Auburn and he had to sit out with the scout team, he was kind of a combo guard, and he tore them up. And that's why I thought he was going to do some of that last year, and he didn't. And a lot of that's because Jared was here and Bryce was here, and they didn't need it. But I think Samir can be really good in that role. Jamal Johnson, uh, who sat out last year after transferring from Memphis, he's going to be the second-team shooting guard. And we'll talk a little bit about him in a, in a little bit. Um, kind of an unusual shooting guard because he's not necessarily much of a shooter, but he's got some other things about him. I think they'll be able to unlock some serious potential out of him. Devin Cambridge, a uh, young man who uh, came from prep school, um, has kind of a weird shot, but it works. Six foot six, had a pretty good game uh, in the exhibition win over Eckerd the other day. So he'll be a guy to look out for, number 35. Then Ant McLemore, uh, still trying to overcome that ankle injury he suffered at South Carolina, what, a year and a half ago. Uh, was not the player we all expected last year. Seemed tentative a lot. 
Uh, and he has a weird, like for a guy his size, and he plays, you know, the four and the five, he has a weird offensive game. I mean, he's like a, he's a spot-up shooter. He's got that kind of flick three-pointer. And he's also a great roll guy off a of pick and roll, which you don't necessarily think from somebody who's like 6'9", 6'10". So, uh, or 6'8", whatever he is. He's kind of an odd offensive player for somebody his size. And then over there in the third row, you know, Ty Jones is going to be your third point guard. I still think he's going to play. Uh, they'd love to get him some minutes. I think he's the kind of guy that's going to come on in February and March. Nobody really there at the shooting guard on the third team. Um, Javon Franklin's a guy that I thought would be in there, but I just don't think he is right now. He's kind of coming back from an injury, and I just don't think he's going to be ready to help right now. Uh, Alan Flanagan, son of assistant coach Wes Flanagan, uh, number 22, left-hander. Um, he's an interesting shooter, that's for sure. And He's a guy who came from a small school. He played – uh, either 1A or 2A basketball in Arkansas. It's kind of not a great league, but he was the dude that was tearing it up every night. I want to say in the playoffs, he had some 35, 40-point games. And me and Jeffrey Lee, who covers recruiting for us, we are both like, damn, this kid must be able to ball because I don't care what league you're in. If you're scoring 35 points a game over a stretch of games, I mean, you've got some ability. And so he's come here, and I think he's really impressed people with the way that he's been able to, to step right in and do some things for them. Uh, Jalen Williams is kind of a big dude. We'll see what he can do as time goes on. And then Baba Tunde, Akingbola, a lot of people call him Stretch. You know, I don't know what to think about him right now. Six foot ten. Um, he spent some time away from the game because he was having some visa problems over in Africa, but he's got that all cleared up. He came in maybe three months ago. And I was blown away by how ready he seemed to me. You know, being away for so long, I just thought he would be like I don't know. I just wasn't expecting him to be as ready as he was. He's just a strong looking dude and he's not clumsy at all. And he's just, I thought he'd be like Trayvon Reed. You remember him from a few years ago, like a really tall guy who came in. Uh, uh, stretch is not that dude. He's way more physical and he's in tremendous shape. He's really fit. And I think he's going to be great in transition as time goes on when he kind of learns exactly where to position himself and stuff, but he's so quick up and down. He's very bouncy. And I think he's a guy that's going to get, you know, five, six, seven, minutes per game and just depends on what happens with ant and certainly austin wiley because you know he gets into some foul trouble sometimes uh next slide here i'm going to show is best practices so i mentioned uh in a video we did a couple weeks ago that we have partnered here with synergy sports technology it's a, uh, a company or a website that does very in-depth scouting of all college and nba teams and uh we have partnered with them and gotten a chance to look through their database and they have incredibly deep uh, analytics that they do and part of that is it shows I think there's like eight major types of shots you can take according to them it's like you know spot up shooting pick and roll roll man pick and roll ball handler uh, transition tip ins I mean you know what I'm saying just all the things in a game that you can do to score the basketball and each kid based on how often they get a chance to do that shot and how many points they get off of it gets a percentage and if you're the best in the country then you're the 99% guy. And if you're the worst in the country, you're the 1% guy. So I went through each one of the returning players and looked at what they do best, according to Synergy Sports. Javon McCormick, pick and roll ball handler. So he's a guy who goes into a pick and roll, comes either around the screen or backs out of the screen, and then either shoots or dribbles in, does whatever. Very effective in that role. Also, as I mentioned, he's a good spot-up shooter, but I don't think he'll be doing much of that this year just because he's going to be the point guard. Uh, Samir Dowdy, spot-up shooting. You know, he just kind of, plants his feet somewhere along the uh, perimeter, takes a pass up with it. And he was really good, particularly in the SEC tournament, man. He lit it up, NCAA tournament as well. He got really, really hot uh, as a sta as a spot-up three-point shooter. And I know BP is going to have some issues maybe getting away from that a little bit with Samir and having him be more of a combo guard. But I mean, they need that from him. I just wonder if it's going to affect his spot-up shooting because he was so good in that role last year. Daniel Purifoy, I got to mention this. So he didn't get a lot of chances last year. Uh, he was kind of like the eighth guy. Uh, he got really good again in March. That, that was kind of a common refrain. that may explain how they got to the Final Four, but he was truly elite at being a roll man off pick and roll. So he sets the screen, ball goes around him, and either he maybe takes a side step out and then shoots a three, or he can take the pass off that and then cut in. I mean, there's several things you can do with that. But Dangel was really good taking off that screen, getting the pass, and doing something with it. I mean, he was elite. He was like the 98% guy. And I think there were only like 10 or 11 guys in the whole country who were better 
at that particular kind of shot. Now, he only got like 17 or 18 chances to run that last year, and he finished with like a points per possession of like 1.25, which is insane for that kind of shot. I think that's something they're going to be working on him. Uh, he's been working on it, and I think they're going to give him a lot more chances to do that this year. He's also a good spot-up shooter. Uh, Austin Wiley, post-up guy, back to the basket. There's just not many people that can actually physically work against him. He's so tall, and he's big, and he actually has pretty good feet um, when he's on the scoring end. So that's something you'll be seeing from him. Anthony McLemore, Ant McLemore, as they call him. Uh, pick and roll, roll man, like I said, same thing. He's so good at that. They kept doing it last year over and over and over where he would set a screen. Jared would go over the screen, then he would sidestep it and go out to the perimeter. And so few defensive teams would be able to stick with him, and he would just kind of sidestep, hits the ball, boom. He'd have that little flick that he does. He was deadly with that. It's just kind of weird for a guy his size to be so good at that, but hey, it works. And then Jamal Johnson, kind of tricky situation there. So he played at Memphis in 2018. 17, 18, and he sat out last year as a transfer. When he was at Memphis, he played a whole lot as a shooting guard there, and they used him as a spot-up shooter. And he was like 50 percentile guy. Like, he was just merely okay. But there were two other kinds of plays where he was insanely good. Uh, number one was cu as a cutter. So you can do that in transition as maybe like a stop-go cut where you're kind of jogging up the court, and then all of a sudden, you know, you see your guy looking at the ball instead of you. Then you speed up and go around him, take the ball there, and you dunk it or lay it in, whatever. He was really good in transition. And also you can just do backdoor cuts or just various cuts away from the ball. And he had a chance to do like 20 or 25 of those, and he finished in the top, I don't know, 5%, 10% of the country in those too. So it's like Memphis wasn't using him right is the way that I kind of interpret it. And I'll be interested to see how Auburn uses Jamal Johnson. Uh, just as a quick reminder, he's a six foot four guy. He is the son of Buck Johnson who played at Alabama, but he was teammates with Austin Wiley at Spain Park in Birmingham before he went to Memphis. And now he's back here. Um, definitely a good kid, quiet kid, very mannerly. Um, you know, a lot of times basketball players are like super, very cocky. And uh, Jamal's not that way. Jamal's the kind of guy that huddles up everybody and says, hey, let's be better, guys. You know, I mean, he's a, he's a raw, raw leader. And I think he's going to be a very valuable guy. It's just that when it comes to offensive stuff, scoring the basketball, he, he's better when he's away from the ball, which is kind of weird for a guard. But I'll be interested to see how they use him this year. Again, all that information is gathered from Synergy Sports Technology, uh, who we've partnered with this year. Let's take a quick look here at what I see as Auburn's weaknesses this season. Now, they've got the six guys I showed you there, and then they've got five newcomers, well, six technically, uh, who they're going to be infusing into the lineup. Obviously, Isaac Okoro, the freshman, number 23, is going to be a starter. The other guys will be coming off the bench, and I think it's just going to be a matter of seeing which one of those guys can step up. BP's going into this game against Georgia Southern, insisting he's got a 12-man rotation. Uh, very few teams in the country can pull that off. I mean, you think about North Carolina and Virginia were going with like six and seven guys last year. So I think he's going to have to whittle that down over time. But right now, he's super committed to it. Uh, Auburn weaknesses. Number one for me is the lack of go-to scorers. I don't doubt that maybe they have some. I just don't see them right now. I mean, Samir was kind of an off-ball spot-up shooter. Javon is great as a downhill attacker, but I don't know if he can be the guy that gives you 18 points a game doing that. Maybe he can. He just hasn't been given the opportunity yet. I know D'Angelo Purifoy has it in him, but he's been unreliable, and it was a weird year last year. He missed the first nine games due to suspension. He came back, was just starting to kind of get moving, then he got hurt. He didn't really get going until February. Is that really the D'Angelo we know, or was it just kind of the perfect role for him being the eighth guy? I don't know. Somebody's going to step up and be a go-to score. Auburn had three of them last year, and that's the reason why they got to the Final Four. They're going to need at least two. Uh, the lack of a lockdown on-ball defender, Bryce Brown was that guy last year. He caused so much trouble when they would just kind of put him up on the ball and say, here, make his night miserable. And he was good at that. Uh, remember Ashton Higgins, uh, the Kentucky point guard, was really hating seeing Bryce Brown. In the NCAA tournament, for sure. And I think Auburn needs to get somebody like that. I mean, Dan Jell's not really that guy. Hasn't been before. Samir's not that guy. Hasn't been before. I think Javon can be a pest, but I don't know as though he's going to be that guy either. Uh, they feel like Isaac Okoro has a lot of abilities, an on-ball defender, but I just need to see it first before I start saying, oh, they've got one. Uh, Wiley's track record. They need Austin Wiley. Um, they're not great rebounding. Obviously, you can see number five there. Austin Wiley is their best rebounder. He is a great rim protector. 
He's a guy that can give them buckets in the half court. If you just dump the ball down to him, I think he's going to be good at that. He's been good at that in the past. He's actually pretty good as a roll guy, pick and rolls too. They need him to stay on the court. It's just been like injuries for him. He fouls out of games. He picks up fouls like nobody's business. He's just got to change how he approaches defense this year and not foul out all the time. He just can't do it. They need him too much this time. He is going in healthy, though, thank goodness for once. Uh, Bench quality. Now, I had to pick my words very carefully there. He's going in with 12. BP feels like he's got so much bench depth he doesn't know what to do with it. I just want to know how many of those guys are really going to be able to help and how many of those guys are you going to trust to help you when these games start getting hairy? That's my question. He's got a lot of bodies. It was the best signing class they've ever had. I have no doubt there's going to be several dudes in that class that are going to be awesome in time. How many are ready to go right now? I don't know the answer to that. And until I know the answer to that, I'm going to put bench quality as a problem. And then rebounding. I mean, there's just not a lot of great rebounders on this team, just going to be honest with you. I mean, they think Okoro can be really good, but still he's a small forward. I mean, he's 6'5". I don't think it's going to be his number one thing. And so you've got Ant and you've got Wiley. And maybe you've got Stretch. I don't know how long. You know, if, Can he stay on the court? Can he defend without fouling? I mean, who's going to get all these rebounds? I don't know. I have a question about that. Uh, so those are the weaknesses. Let's take a look at the strengths, and there are many. Spot-up shooting. They've got four guys that I consider to be very good spot-up shooters. Javon's a really good one. Samir's a really good one. Purifoy's a really good one. And uh, Ant McLemore is a really good spot-up shooter. And you can argue that, yeah, that's four. We'll, we'll leave it at four. That's going to be tough for these teams that want to defend Auburn because they're going to have to sneak out and defend those guys wide is going to open up stuff inside both for Wiley and for cutters. That could be Jamal. That could be Purifoy off the dribble. There's a lot of different things that you can do if the team, if the defensive teams are all worried about shooters on the perimeter. Austin Wiley's refinement. I know that for a lot of people, they think Austin Wiley has been a disappointment and I understand he hasn't been the impact player that we thought he would be, but a lot of that's because of injuries and a lot of that's because he hadn't learned how to defend without fouling. He insists to me that he's been better about that. I, there's no way I can tell until we get into games. But he insists that he knows that he's got to get better at that and he's worked on it and he's 100% right now as far as health goes. When he's in the game and he's healthy, Austin Wiley is an elite offensive performer. He has been the whole time. He's just got to stay on the court. And if they can get 20 to 25 minutes out of him a game, you're going to be really surprised by the numbers that he can put up because he's just really hard to stop. He has good feet. He knows how to put the ball in the hole. Veteran ball handlers, Javon, I think he's a very reliable ball handler. And I think they're going to be happy to have a senior with the ball in his hands as often as they are. And then they're going to have Samir's like kind of like the backup point guard. And he sure has been around a while. And he's pretty good at that too. He's a little more lax than they would like. I think he's going to turn the ball over a little bit more than you guys are going to want. But I think he's a veteran ball handler and he's going to get some things done, particularly as a pick and roll guy you watch. Uh, and then you've also got Jamal Johnson, who can be a combo guard if needed. He's a pretty good ball handler for a guy his size. He's more of a shooting guard, but he's been around. He's been playing the game for a while. Uh, rim protection, obviously Austin Wiley is a good rim protector. Uh, Ant McLemore is a great rim protector. They think Ice Kokoro is going to be able to do that. Stretch is a great rim protector. Uh, that's kind of like the BP way. They funnel stuff, they funnel traffic inside, and they have guys lurking ready to swat balls back and forth. And I think they've got plenty of guys to do that. Uh, number five is rollers abound. I've kind of mentioned this in passing here and just a little while ago, but they've got a lot of guys who are really good as the roll man on a pick and roll. Um, we mentioned that Purifoy was in the top 2% of the entire country last year. I think you're going to see a lot more of that from him. Uh, Wiley's pretty good at that too. I can remember several times where he would set a pick for Jared and then Jared would roll over the top of it. Austin would back out the bottom and then they do an alley-oop or a bounce pass inside. He was great at that. You'd be surprised again. If Austin can stay on the court, he's going to put up numbers, and you're going to be like, damn, I didn't know he had it in him. But he did the whole time. He just never could stay on the court. And obviously, Ant McLemore is a great pick-and-roll guy, too, as a roller. So they got a lot of choices there. All right, so we'll wrap it up there. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, hey, man, give me a subscription on here. Hit, click that subscribe button or give me a thumbs up. If you have any comments, suggestions, or maybe some thoughts about uh, anything I talked about in this video, 
leave a comment. I'll definitely be sure and answer you as quickly as I can. I'm usually around several times per day, so I'll definitely keep an eye on it. Again, thank you for your time for watching us here. Till we see you again, keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars.